Honorable members, I recollect an incident that happened three decades ago when I was a member of the assembly. Interruption is a great nectar. When you interrupt someone, the speech keeps on going on. We had a very senior politician who became chief minister. So once I decided, with the consensus of all the opposition members, we shall not interrupt him today. He was worried, he was concerned. And he said, who has conspired not to interrupt me? <laughs> so you, you tried your best to get some interruption. It didn't come forth. Dr. Kani Moji, NVN Somu. Thank you, Chairman, sir, for giving me an opportunity to speak on the discussion on the appropriation bills. The government seeks to note for the payment and appropriation of amounts from the consolidated funds of India for the current fiscal. Sir, first I would like to make a mention on the farmers. The union government has promised the farmers of this nation that they will, be, that they will double the income of the farmers in the country. Eight years has gone, farmers' income has not doubled. Sadly, farmers' suicide has doubled. A complete analysis on farming techniques and total expenditure incurred directly and indirectly by the farmers for their agricultural production should be calculated accurately and based on this data, MSP for all agricultural produce for farmers. Farmer families owing cultivatable land owning are eligible for receiving income support under the PM Kisan, Kishan scheme. The beneficiaries are identified based on their land records. The scheme does not cover the landless agricultural laborers who form 55% of the agricultural workers in the country. The tenant farmers who are a significant farm part of the landless farmers in many states do not receive the income support benefits. The government should provide all necessary support and encourage states to create a digitalized mapping of farmlands incorporating every finer detail on the land utility cent by cent in a time-bound manner. Credit eligibility certificates, which would act as tenancy or lease certificates, should be issued to tenant farmers. These certificates would enable endless, the landless tenant cultivators to obtain agricultural credit. Sir, as we are talking about the farmers, I would also like to mention the following. The linking of the rivers, particularly linking the peninsula rivers, is the need of the hour. But as it remains unfulfilled for several years, I urge upon the government to take concrete steps to execute the linking of the peninsula rivers a reality. Tamil Nadu, being a low riparian state, is struggling to get its rightful share of Kaveri water from Karnataka. It's unfortunate that the Karnataka state government gives scant respect to the legally constituted Kaveri Water Management Authority to violate the award of the Supreme Authority. Sir, I urge the Union Government to intervene immediately and warn the Karnataka Government for their unconstitutional illegal efforts to construct a dam at the Megadadu in River Kaveri. It is a constitutional duty of the Union Government to intervene and solve the issue between the two neighboring states. Sir, then on the road and the infrastructure, enhancing the road networks and connectivity is very important to have a flourishing economy. The Honorable Finance Minister has announced the PM Kadi Shakti Master Plan for Infrastructure Development and a Master Plan for Expressways to boost economic growth for the next financial year. Sir, our Honorable Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, Talabadi, M.K. Stalin, has requested the Union Government for declaring eight state roads. In principle, approval has been granted by the Road Transport and Highways Ministry. I urge the Union Government for the early approval of the same. Sir, on the tolls and the road accidents, there is an increase of more toll gates, will increase transportation costs, which will again affect the common man, causing hardship and local residents. NHAI has already hiked all toll gate fee by 4%, from, by 4 to 21%, which lead to the rise of prices of essential commodities. Besides essential commodities, toll fees also affect transportation of raw materials and finished goods across the states. So India tops the world with 11% of global deaths in road accidents, with about 4.5 lakh road crashes per annum 
in which 1.5 lakh people die, which account for 11% of the road crash deaths, witnessing 53 road crashes every hour, killing one person every four minutes. The government should focus on this area of road safety and, main and road maintenance. Sir, so the Tamil Nadu government has initiated a wonderful scheme to save the life of accident victims. Anyone who met with a road accident anywhere in Tamil Nadu would be admitted and given treatment immediately in the nearest hospital without any fear of who will pay the bill. The government of Tamil Nadu is allocating maximum of 1 lakh rupees to provide treatment for the first two days of accident victims. The accident victims are admitted in hospitals well within the golden hour. Through this initiative, thousands of accident victims were saved in Tamil Nadu. This scheme can be emulated throughout the country to reduce the fatalities of the Indian roads. Sir, about the tourism, Tamil Nadu is the most sought tourism des tourist destinations in India due to the rich cultural heritage, inherited wealth of Tamil Nadu. Unfortunately, in India, though the potential for improving tourism industry the efforts from the Union government is very much wanting. We lag way behind in this regard. Tourism should be given an unprecedented importance by the government of India to showcase the geographical diversity, the rich cultural heritage and the historical legacy of India to the world. Yes, I agree. Tamil Nadu is a paradise of gigantic ancient cultural uh, structural temples for the consciousness of ancient art, architecture and heritage. Just imagine and calculate the cost incurred for the construction of the architectural marvels, the big ta temple Tanjavur, the Gangai Konda Cholapuram, the sprawling multi-tower temples at the Trivanamalai, Kanchipuram, Sri Rangam, Madurai and Rameshwaram, or the gigantic Vellur Fort or the aesthetic Sanji Fort. Just think of the love of labor which has occurred on those temples. How precious those everlasting temples and historic monuments. It may not be possible to construct one such temple in this modern era, we have hundreds of them spread all over entire Tamil Nadu and beyond. Owing to the diverse culture and heritage of each stage, I recommend that the future tourism policy be state-specific, sir. Apart from Chennai, several important tourist destinations in Tamil Nadu are a matter of great pride and been on the priority list of foreign tourists. Therefore, Tamil Nadu should be given more direct international flights, especially to and fro from European countries and better connectivity to other cities in Tamil Nadu. Sir, the textile and the MSME, the textile sector and garment sector is undergoing a severe crisis as a result of multiple factors, including the economic impact of the COVID-19, the Russia-Ukraine war, and the anticipated economic slowdown in the West. The month-on-month -month growth rate in ready-made garment exports is now showing a sharp decline. The exporting units and the supplier MSMEs are staring a at a severe financial crisis in the ensuing months due to the low demand. Lacks of jobs, particularly for the rural women who form a significant chunk of the workforce, are in danger. Our Honorable Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, M.K. Stalin, had written a letter to the Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, requesting to announce a special emergency credit line guarantee scheme for the MSME sectors also suggested 20% additional collateral free credit be provided under the new scheme. Considering the above circumstances, the MSMEs must be given a special credit facilities to survive the crisis. I urge the government to announce a special emergency credit line guarantee scheme for the MSMEs, the textile sector and the garment sector immediately. Sir, make in India, make for the world this mantra of Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi gave in his 2020 Independence Day speech. For this vision to be successful, over 6.3 crore, crore of micro, small and medium enterprises must be taken on board, encouraging an innovation-led ecosystem that incentivizes technological interventions over the medium term could make small business make more for India and the world. The rapid increase in input costs the impacted MSME production amid volatile supply issues. While reducing import duties on raw materials like steel could provide immediate support, indexing the raw material prices in long-term government procurement contracts could provide the necessary cushion against inflation and unnecessary and uncertainty in the supply chains. To ease credit and liquidity concerns, the emergency credit line guarantee scheme should be expanded further to the to ensure outreach among the smaller enterprises within the MSMEs. 
Sir, I would like to draw the immediate attention of this August House regarding the serious disruptions faced by the textile industry in Tamil Nadu due to the escalating price of the rise <coughs> of the cotton and the yarn. The union government took a note of the situation and our request had notified the withdrawal of the import duty levied on cotton. Despite this, the situation is not improved and the prices of cotton and yarn continue to rise. This precarious situation has widespread ramifications for the textiles industries in Tamil Nadu. The situation also has an adverse impact on handloom weavers in the cooperative sector as they are not able to procure yarn and supply the same to the members for the weaving of the cloth. The growing discontent in the industry and among the weavers is alarming. The union government should initiate appropriate steps to rein in the cotton prices rise and con consequent disruptions in the textile value chain to save textile units in the Tamil Nadu. Sir, the union government's approach towards the implementation of projects is lackadaisical and wanting. People of Tamil Nadu have apprehension that Tamil Nadu is getting stepfatherly treatment when it comes to the railway project or the national highway project or any other project announced by the union government. Sir, the setting up of the aims at Madurai was announced in the budget of 2015. Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi had laid the foundation stone just before the last Lok Sabha elections. Literally, there is no physical progress in the construction of the aims in Madurai. Now, the revised estimates have been sent to the Department of Expenditure for approval. When the PM laid the foundation stone in 2019, the project cost was estimated to be Rs. 1,264 crore, which had reportedly climbed to Rs. 2,000 crore by December 2020. In March 21, the Japan International Cooperation Agency, the JICA, extended assistance to the tune of Rs. 1,624 crore. The Union Health Ministry noted in the Lok Sabha in February 2022 that the pre-investment work has been substantially completed and the loan agreement signed between the governments of India and Japan. The process to engage a project management consultant is underway. We have no other choice to urge the Union Government to expedite the construction of AIMS at Madurai so as to enable the Honorable Prime Minister to inaugurate AIM just before the Lok Sabha elections of 2024. <laughs> allotment, of, <laughs> allotment of funds to the states. <laughs> so the 15th Finance Commission guidelines with regards to the delegation of funds to the states and the union territories consider that the delegation will be as per the 2011 census. Tamil Nadu is the only state which sincerely and successfully implemented the family planning program proposed by the union government. The South India states, particularly Tamil Nadu, has controlled its population growth just to 6%. But the North Indian states family planning program was not implemented with sincerity and due respect. As a result, there is an increase in the population of states like Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. As the population of the state is taken as the major criteria for elevation of funds, Tamil Nadu is badly affected. The union government should come forward to allocate more funds to Tamil Nadu as the state is contributing much to the union's share of money by the way of tax and other collection. In the same way, sir, I would like to mention here the number of Lok Sabha constituencies in 2020-26 would be fixed as per the delimitation committee proposals. This would very seriously affect the prospects of the South Indian states, especially Tamil Nadu. It is absolutely ridiculous and very unfair for the states which implemented successfully the family planning programs were penalized and states which were reckless are being insensitized. Same, same. Sir, own house owning these days, in this age, to have a own house on their own for the people have to toil for their whole lifetime. Now, even now, 60% of people living in the metro cities and two-tier cities do not have own houses. Better home loan benefits can alone boost the post-pandemic economy. With the real estate sector in India expected to reach one trillion in the market size in the next five or six years, the union government should provide incentives to citizens to make investments in real estates. People of all states would like to have a house of their own, especially the people in the unorganized sector like the taxi and the auto drivers, daily wage workers, require generous support to pay to own a house. PMAY and the other such schemes to provide houses require allocation of more funds and equitable distribution. So, due to the price rise, inflation, poverty, unemployment and crime against the women, 
are on the rise since 2014 yes. due to the inappropriate economic policies and the financial mismanagement economy has gone tailspin. Recession has taken place in our country. The trade deficit is on the rise and the Indian rupee is plummeting against the US dollar. Unfortunately, all the ministers of the union government are always busy in the election campaign. <laughs> Sir, before... <laughs> <laughs> Sir, before I conclude, I would like to retreat that the budget is not merely an account of the government's budgeted expense and receipts. It also sets the stage for the country's growth and reform trajectory. I hope the government will fulfill the aspirations of poor, downtrodden, and middle class people. Thank you, sir. Good, good. Sri Raghav Chadha.